Early in the evolution of the field of linguistics, it was common for researchers to attempt language descriptions based on the structure of individual languages. This approach to language description was called the structuralist approach and it was made popular by academics such as Leonard Bloomfield. It was useful in that it presented a tailor-made description for new languages which were discovered. Where it fell short was that it didn't have a coherent way to explain the relatedness between languages in the same language family or the relatedness between all human languages. The structuralist approach didn't offer up an explanation of language at the deep structure. It wasn't until Chomsky introduced the concept of universal grammar in the 1950s and then refined the theory into generative grammar by the 70s that we had an explanation for how language operates at the deep syntactic level. Understanding this deep syntactic level is what makes parsing the various phrases inside a sentence possible. The most basic way to think of parsing a sentence is into a subject and a predicate. Depending on the sentence, however, the subject and predicate might contain multiple clauses each, and each clause could have several phrases. So simply indicating what part of the sentence is the subject or predicate isn't detailed enough. Let's take a simple sentence and see how this sentence would be constructed. The art student will look at a very beautiful painting. The first thing we could do is to label each lexical item according to its word class. Next, we can identify the different phrases. Notice that some phrases are embedded inside other phrases. Once we have identified the various phrases, we can start grouping them under the larger sentence head. So, we have a noun phrase which contains a determiner and an adjective phrase attached directly to S. Then, we have what is called an auxiliary verb. This verb doesn't have a full semantic meaning. It is simply telling us something about the time frame of the action. In this case, the action will occur sometime in the future. The auxiliary is attached directly to S. The main verb heads its own phrase, and inside that phrase, it has a constituent prepositional phrase. The preposition phrase also has a constituent noun phrase, and inside the noun phrase is an adjective phrase complement. Once all the nodes are connected, we now have a syntax tree for this sentence. Syntax trees or phrase markers, as they are sometimes called, are useful for indicating three things. Firstly, they indicate the relative grouping and hierarchy of phrases in a sentence. Secondly, they indicate which phrases require an obligatory constituent or an optional complement. And finally, syntax trees indicate the phrase structure rules for each phrase. Thankfully, you won't need to be climbing any of these trees. You just need to know how to draw them.